Okay, so how is everyone today? Good? Very good. Uh, so, any questions before we get to business? Any questions? Okay, so we've been talk talking about um, factoring uh, polynomials, and we're still talking about uh, factoring polynomials. So, uh, a few lectures ago, we wrote down a formula, and I'm going to write down that same formula, except I'm going to switch the left and right hand sides. Uh, so, a few days ago, the right hand side of the formula was this, uh, a squared minus b squared. And my question is, is can you remember the left hand side? Ah, the, the, what was the left hand side? Very good. A plus B product A minus B. Right. So this is referred to as the product of conjugates formula. <clears throat> and the way that you can say this out loud uh, is, left to right, the difference of squares difference of squares is product of conjugates. Okay, so now we're going to work with this formula uh, a little bit. So for example, please uh, factor by first expressing as a difference of squares. Oops, DIF of squares. And the, the thing to factor is, uh, how about x squared minus 9? <clears throat> OK. So uh, the end goal is to factor. But the instructions. Uh, give a speci uh, say specifically you have to do it in in this way, right? By first expressing as a difference of squares. Okay. Well, it's already expressed as a difference because it's one thing minus another thing, so it's already expressed as a difference. That's good. Uh, is it expressed as a difference of squares? Not presently. Uh, not presently because uh, x squared is a square, so that one's already good. Good to go. So we can just copy that one. Now, is 9 expressed as a square? Now, notice the difference in language. Here's a different question. Is 9 a square? It is. But at the present time, is, is this expressed as a square? It is not. So how can I express it as a square? 3 squared. So x squared minus 3 squared. So this is the different is it's now expressed as a difference of squares and now that we've done that we can write down the factorization okay so what's the factorization very good x plus 3 multiplied by x minus 3 Okay, good. Next, uh, how about uh, please same instructions as above. Uh, how about um, four uh, times z squared minus twenty-five. So same instructions as above.
Okay, so how can we write it as a difference of squares? Well, it needs to be, so 25 is easy enough, I think, because how can 25 be expressed as a square? Five squared. So it should be subtract five squared. And then now we want to express this as a square. So it needs to be one thing and then squared. Right, 2z and all that squared. Okay, so any question about getting it to the difference of squares? Okay. That being the case, what's the factorization? Uh huh. 2z plus 5 multiplied by 2z minus 5. Any question about this example? So I'll make a note about penmanship. So this is not about the solution, just a note about the penmanship. In a math class, it's quite important for you to, uh, for all of the symbols to be readily distinguishable. So it is, there's, a, there's probably like a tenth of you, maybe a little more, maybe a fifth of you, one out of five, one out of ten of you do not really express your z's very differently than your twos. And furthermore, you do not write the dot in between two things that are being multiplied. So I want you to, right now, don't, don't, don't raise your hand, but I want you to look at your paper. And if you wrote something that looks like this, then you need to cease and desist <laughs> in a math class. You need to write your twos very differently than your z's. Okay, because this is ambiguous and it makes the grader sad. And the grader is instructed to give you no credit when your answer is ambiguous. Okay, because if it's ambiguous then it's not entirely clear that you knew what you were doing. Okay, good. Any questions about that? Yeah? What if we make sure that our twos and our z's are distinguishable from mm -hmm. each other? Is it okay if we did? Because I've been taught not to put the multiplication sign, and that's what I'm used to whenever I get really into the into focusing. So mm -hmm. would that still be okay, or do I get, still need to go with the multiplication? The dot between the two and the z? I encourage you to write the dot. It's not a hard requirement. What, but, what, but what is a hard requirement is that if what you've written is so confusing that the grader can't fix it, it's not clear to the grader unambiguously that you, that you did it right, then it is by definition wrong. Other questions? Good. <coughs> same question, or same instructions. Uh, how about um, y squared minus 10? Okay, well, I, by, by just g going by statistics, I would guess that about uh, half of you are uncomfortable with this question. <laughs> Maybe more. And let's see if I can put your discomfort into words. Uh, well, when we were doing x squared minus 9, I, 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 that was okay because I know that I know that 9 can be written as 3 squared. And when we were doing this one, that one was okay because I know 25 could be written as 5 squared. But I'm really concerned about this one because 10 cannot be written as a square. And that's actually false. Uh, let me modify my statement so that it's correct. Uh, 10 cannot be written as uh, an integer squared. Yeah, that's true. Right. Uh, because 9 has an integer square root, it's 3. And 25 has an integer square root, it's 5. But 10 doesn't have an integer square root. Okay. But does it have a square root? Yes. It does. 
And that's all that we need. So we'll write it as, well, y squared is already written as a square, so it's fine. We just copy it. And then minus square root of 10 squared. Right? Because what is the square root of 10 squared? Ten. It's 10. OK. <clears throat> so then what's the answer? Uh-huh. Very good. Okay, so now I want I want you to see that you've actually been doing this the whole time. It was just it was just obscured from your view. It was hidden uh, because, after all, for this exercise, uh, couldn't couldn't we have proceeded in the following way? Couldn't we have proceeded like this and gone uh, well? Express this as x squared, oh, my green pin is so sad, minus uh, square root of 9 squared. Isn't that the same as that? It's a different way to write it. Under normal circumstances, you wouldn't, you wouldn't write square root of 9. You'd write 3. But you could write square root of 9. And if we did it like that, then we could say that the answer is uh, x plus the square root of 9 multiplied by x minus the square root of 9 and then simplified it into that one. Right, so all I'm trying to point out is you've been doing it that way the whole time. It's just now becoming apparent what you were doing, possibly. Oh, I'm just going to have to just retire this one for now. Maybe not. OK, <clears throat> let's try another one. So how about, uh, for example, same instructions as above. Um, a new letter. How about uh, 16 multiplied by a squared minus, uh, let's not be too drastic, how about 5? We want to write it as the, the difference of squares. <clears throat> okay, so what will the first square be? 4 a. 4a, and then all of that squared. Any question about how, why that is the first term? 4a all squared. And then minus what? Very good. Square root of 5, and then all that squared. So again, expressed as the difference of squares. Now that it's expressed as the difference of squares, we can write it as the product of conjugates. What conjugates? Very good. 4a plus square root 5 multiplied by, very good, 4a minus square root 5. Any question about this one? Finally, how about uh, same instructions as above? 3 times w squared uh, minus 49. So what's the first term? Okay. 
Okay. Times W. And then all that squared. Right. Uh, then what? Minus 7 squared. So now it's expressed as the difference of squares. Now that it is the difference of squares, I'm going to write it as the product of conjugates. What conjugates? Very good. Square root of 3 multiplied by w plus 7. And then, and then that multiplied by square root of 3 multiplied by w minus 7. Yes? Uh, so multiplication is uh, commutative. Mm -hmm. Is it okay if I put the W like, in the front? Okay, so uh, you mean for this, for this, yeah, we're going to talk about that in just a second. Besides that specific question, is there another question? Okay, so this is a little remark here. Uh, yes, uh, multiplication uh, is commutative. And therefore, it is the case that the square root of 3 multiplied by w is w multiplied by the square root of 3. And it's just fine for you to write, to write it either way. It doesn't matter. Uh, there's another matter that we need to uh, discuss. And that is that uh, here's another potential way to make the greater sad by making an ambiguous um, by writing something that's ambiguous. So how is that ambiguous? Right. Is the W in the radical or is it not? Again, because it's ambiguous, it's wrong. An ambiguous statement is, uh, is just wrong. Uh, so for that reason, for that reason, some folks like to put the W first, right? Or, well, really, what I mean is put the radical last. But the way, you've, uh, the way to fix that is you can notice that I, the way I'm writing the radicals, so this is not ambiguous. the square root of 3 multiplied by w. It's not ambiguous because that dot is clearly outside. And furthermore, the radical has a nice little hat, right? Because it's going to the party. Uh, and that, that hat indicates that that's the end of it, right? It doesn't extend any further. Okay, good. Any question about just notation and penmanship and that kind of thing? Okay. <coughs> So last time, we were doing examples like the following. So now the instruction is just factor. So factor uh, x squared plus 8 times x uh, minus 20. And then what, what is the technique that we use to do this? Hmm. Very good. We do the sum product thing. So, so yes, we want the sum to be 8. And we want the product to be negative 20. And of course, it's the 8 comes from this 8. And the negative 20 uh, comes from there. So what we're looking for is a pair of numbers whose product is negative 20 and whose sum is 8. So how about, uh, well, how about uh, negative 4 and 5? Is that, is that a winner? It's not a winner, right? Why is it not a winner? Right. The sum is 1, which in particular is not 8. OK. How about 2 and 10? Is that a winner? No. 
Well, I even before considering the sum, something is not right about it. The product is not negative 20. The product's not negative 20. Okay. Both of those have to be satisfied. The reason why I'm bringing this up is because there's a, there's a multitude of exercises where um, you can want it to be the case uh, that for it, it's not true in this one, but it could be something like we want the product to be that one and the sum to be that one, and the, you don't get the signs right, but you get the sum right. Okay, so I promise you I'm going to give you one of those. Okay, so you got to pay close attention to make sure both of those are satisfied. So yes, one of them needs to be negative. Which one? Okay, good, so negative two. Uh, and then the sum of those is eight. We found a winner. I is it clear why that's a winner? Okay, as a result, we know the factorization. What's the factorization? Very good. X plus 10 multiply X minus two. This is the kind of thing that we were doing last time. OK. So now I'm going to write a little hidden block. So what I mean by this is, yes, of course, you can see it. Uh, and I'm going to write it down. But then we're going to do an exercise immediately after it. And we're going to go with the fiction that it's invisible. OK. So th you can imagine that this is like me back in my office conspiring to make an exercise uh, for you. So. 2 multiplied by x uh, plus 3, and then multiplied by x plus uh, 6, say. So then I'll multiply this out and collect like terms uh, and get uh, the f term. The f term will be 2 multiplied by x squared. Uh, the o term will be 12x. Uh, the i term will be 3x. And the l term will be 18. Okay. And that uh, now is invisible. It's invisible now. So the request is to factor. Uh, 2x squared uh, plus 15x Oops. Uh, plus 18. Of course, the answer is right there. <laughs> okay. <clears throat> okay. So uh, can we use the technique that we used on the previous exercise? We cannot. Because the technique used on the previous exercise uh, requires what? Assumes what? A monic polynomial. Right? So, uh, so the, the notable thing about this exercise is that this polynomial is not monic. Now, that's a nice vocabulary word. Would someone please remind us what monic means? Right. Monic means leading coefficient is 1. Uh, for In the present exercise, what is the leading coefficient? 2, which in particular is not 1. So, so uh, in, in math 1314, and generally in, in math, when you're dealing with a polynomial, if you're dealing with a monic polynomial, that means that this is uh, an easier exercise. So, it's so, so like easier techniques are, are available. Uh, the fact that this is not monic means that this is going to be not so easy. So, that, so, fine. As a result, the technique, uh, technique that we used on the previous exercise uh, can't be used. So we need a new technique. <clears throat> uh, in fact, it's not entirely new. It's, it's uh, a minor modification. 
Uh, the way we'll do it is as follows. So now I'm just going to copy that down just so that that sentence is not in the way. So 2 times x squared plus 15 times x plus 18. We're still going to do a sum product table. And in fact, we still want the sum to be that middle number. We still want the sum to be 15. So, so far it's just like the previous technique. And we still want a product, and now's where, now here's where the differences start becoming apparent. So if, if this polynomial were monic, then what would we want the product to be? 18. 18. But it's not monic because its leading coefficient is 2. So what do we want the uh, product to be? 18 times 2. So it'll be 2 multiplied by 18, which is 36. So this part is still the same. <laughs> But the distinction is now we want the product to be the product of the first and last coefficient. Ugh. Okay. Now before we go any further, I'd like to point out something about uh, that, that exercise we did at the top of the page. Uh, what is the leading coefficient for this, for this one? One. And so you could just interpret this as one times negative 20, right? Which means that, in fact, in all cases, we, we want the product to be the product of the first and last coefficient. <coughs> yes? That's correct. <clears throat> OK, so now two numbers whose product is uh, 36 and whose uh, sum is 15. Uh, so well, I'm going to try. I don't know. I, I, I've got a good feeling about how about 2 and 18? Does that work? No, right? Because its sum is 20. OK, I'm all out of ideas. 3 and 12, okay, yeah, okay, fine. So 3 and 12, is that the correct product? Yes. It is, and then the sum of those is 15. Okay, so we found a winner, a winning pair. Is there any question about what it means to find a winning pair? So now, in the monic case, the answer is immediate. It's just immediately you can write down the answer. In the non-monic case, there's still work to do. So now, using the winning pair, using the winning pair, we're going to split uh, the middle term Uh, 15 uh, X okay so let me show you what I mean by that so 2 times X squared plus 15 times X plus uh, 18 so that was <laughs> this is what we are required to factor uh, What's currently written? How many terms are there? Three. Three terms. What we're going for, we're going for a representation that has four terms. So there's three terms, one, two, three. But we want there to be four terms. And the way we're going to do that is we're going to split the middle term into two terms in the following way. We're going to say that this is 2 multiplied by x squared plus, and now we take the winning pair, 3 and 12, 3 and 12 add to be 15. So we're going to say that this is plus 3 times x plus 12 times x and then plus 
18. So what I'm saying is that we took the middle term and split it in that way. Now there's four terms. Okay, because uh, now that there's four terms, we're going to make two groups of two. So let me explain what I mean by that. <clears throat> We're going to parenthesize the first two terms to make a group. 2 times x squared plus 3 times x. Uh, plus 12 times x. plus 18. So now, there's two groups, two sets of parentheses, and within each set, there's two terms. Any question about getting to here? Yes, we, I was writing that last step. Will you articulate in the word what just happened? Yeah, one more time. Here's four terms, and uh, we're going to group the first two terms. In a, pair, in a set of parentheses, okay. and also the last two terms. And like so. Okay, so now, it's at this point where some student usually raises their hand and says, I took a class one time, an SAT prep class, and they showed me a faster way to do this. Can I do that in this class? And the answer is, no, you cannot. Magical techniques are not permitted in a university level class, sorry. Any questions about that? If you don't know what I'm talking about, then you're not in danger of doing it. Okay. Furthermore, if you, if you do know what I'm talking about, you're not in danger of making a mistake because I'm showing you the correct technique right now. Yes? So I take it to mean that when we make the split, I wrote 3x plus 12x, and the question might be, could I have just as well written 12x plus 3x? And the answer is, it would be just fine either way. It would work either way. Okay, so now that we have two groups of two, uh, in each group, <coughs> we'll factor out uh, the GCF. Can someone remind us what GCF means? Greatest common factor, which is what we talked about last time. Okay, so in the first group, uh, what is the greatest common factor? X. X, right? Because concerning the coefficients 2 and 3, are there any integers which divide 2 and also 3? There aren't any. Uh, then x squared, that means xx, and that is just an x. So the first term has two x's it could yield up, and this one just has one, and then what's the rule? Least, Least right? So then we can factor out an x uh, out of the first group. Okay, then I'll fill in those parentheses in a moment. And then concerning the second group, what's the greatest common factor? Six. Six, right? Because concerning the coefficients 12 and 18, the greatest integer factor that can be factored out is six and then we can't get any x's out. So we could write a 6 right there. So now we're going to fill in those uh, parentheses. Of course, if you were doing an exercise, you would just start writing them in. But because I'm doing lecture notes, I'm going to leave that line so that you can remember that we talked about that. And then I'm going to do it on this line. So concerning the first group, when you factor out an x, what do you need to write? 2x plus 3. Okay, so that's 
uh, to get the first group to be right. Okay, then ignoring the first group and just looking at the second, if you factor six out of that, what uh, remains? 2x plus 3. Wow, something interesting and notable has occurred. What? They're the same, right? These are the same. Now, uh, for, for this kind of exercise, uh, this is not a coincidence. This is by design. If they weren't the same, that would indicate that you've made an error. So this is, this is a, like a signpost on the way to the answer. If you don't achieve this halfway through, then somewhere above you've made a mistake. Uh, furthermore, that's one of the things that the graders are going to be looking for. Okay, uh, because it's the same, so let me obscure it for a moment. Suppose that I'm, th it's the same thing under, under my index fingers there. Uh, suppose I'm obscuring a y so that it was xy plus 6y. Then what could we factor out? A y, because y would be common. What if it was xw plus 6w? Then what could we factor out? A w. What if it was x banana plus 6 banana? We could factor out a banana, right? The only thing that matters is that I'm obscuring the same thing in both places. Am I obscuring the same thing in both places? I am. So it can be factored, it can be factored out. OK. So we're going to factor out 2x plus 3. So we factored it out. Again, this is just, you know, banana. Uh, my question is, is what needs to go in here? X plus 6. X plus six. So uh, specifically, this x, no, I keep grabbing that green pen. Uh, this x went here, this plus, there, this 6, there. Ah, so we factored it now. Now, uh, when we, right before we started this exercise, I said that <laughs> I've, I'm writing, writing something that's invisible. But now, and we went with that fiction. Now let's let's go with the truth. It's there. Did we get it right? Yes. And we did. We did. Uh, furthermore, uh, when we started factoring polynomials, I mentioned that uh, distribution and collecting like terms is uh, the inverse operation of factoring. And I also said factoring is more difficult than distribution and collecting like terms in the same sense that walking uphill is more difficult than walking downhill. Uphill? No. Da downhill? <laughs> uphill. Okay. This one is more complicated. Good. Any question about it? Okay. One more. <coughs> so for example, no, we're going to make another hidden block. <laughs> This is invisible. Uh, so how about 2 times w uh, minus 5 multiplied by 3 times w plus 4. Uh, multiplying this out and collecting like terms. So this would be 6 times w squared the O term would be plus 8W. 
the I term minus 15W, Gesundheit, and then the L term negative 20. Uh, as a result, the request is the following. Please factor 6 multiplied by w squared uh, minus 7w uh, minus 20. So if you were uh, suddenly faced with such an exercise, what's the, what's the very first thing to note? It's not monic. Which, in a sense, is your signal that, oh, it's going to be one of those, right? <laughs> it's going to be one of those. Fine. We still need to make a sum product table. So what's the sum that we're looking for? Not 7. Negative 7. And what's the product we're looking for? Negative 120. Uh, yes. <laughs> I paused there for a second, like, uh, what? <laughs> uh, so, uh, that, uh, it's always going to be that one. And then the sum is always going to be the middle one. And then the product is always going to be the product of the first and last uh, coefficient. Okay, so two numbers whose product is negative 120 and whose sum is negative 7. <laughs> well, yes. But uh, I'm going to try. How about uh, negative 10 and 12? And then the sum is what? 2. Uh, so that's not right, uh, because it doesn't even have the right sign. So maybe I'll try 10 and negative 12. The sum of those is negative 2. Well, at least I have the right sign. OK, we're running out of time, so let's skip to the end. Uh, how about what? 8 and negative 15. Uh, that product is correct. And then the sum is negative 7. So what are we going to do with this pair? We're going to use, use the pair to split. So we're going to use this pair. To split, uh, what are we going to split? Negative 7w. So now, uh, it doesn't matter what order you write them in. It doesn't matter. Uh, but if there's a negative, if one of them is negative, then usually the, the exercise is just marginally easier if you use the negative one first. It doesn't matter which, which order you do it in. So, so don't be concerned on that account. But it's, but it's slightly easier when you use the negative one first. So I'm going to write this down, and then we're going to have a quiz. So 6w squared. And then rather than writing negative 7w, what am I going to write? Minus 15w plus 8w, and then uh, minus 20. That would be the split. And so I'm just going to note that using the negative one first is a little easier. OK, so would you please put away your things, and we're going to have a quiz.